Hello and welcome to yet another exciting edition of The Ladies Club. My name is Valen Kirti. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. So as is tradition, we always get the show underway with an inspiring quote from a woman in sports. This comes from American artistic gymnast Gabby Douglas. She said, never give up and always keep fighting because though times may be tough, the sacrifices do pay off. So just keep pushing towards your dream and just love it at the same time and enjoy it. And you seem to enjoy it whenever you get to actually see Gabby Douglas in action. Douglas is known by other Olympians as the flying squirrel at 19 years old. She took the world by storm at the 2012 London Olympics when she became the first American to receive gold for the individual overall competition as well as in the team competition. Douglas was also the first woman of color to become the Olympic all-around champion. She's since won more accolades outside of the Olympics for breaking down racial and athletic barriers. So today's topic that we've got on the ladies club as we come from that inspiring quote is about those women that are breaking the mold and making history. In sports today we see many women transforming the long held perceptions of where women do and don't fit in. So those women that say we are creating a new normal and I really like that. What is the new normal? Join in our conversation on Twitter at sports at SABC. Use our hashtag hashtag the ladies club. We also on Facebook. It's so simple to find us on the SABC sports page and use our hashtag the ladies club so our guest today is our game changer she is the tux sport marketing manager Mane Bocanio. she joins us now very good morning and welcome to uh, the ladies club Hi, Valen. Thank you guys for having me. So back in 2016, Mane broke the mold when she became the youngest marketing manager in tax history. There she oversees the marketing departments of over 30 different sporting codes. Mane is passionate about sports marketing and communications, qualifying with a BCom in communication management. So you've done it. You've made history <laughs> in your own part of the world. But where did it all start for you and why sports? Well, it's quite funny because I actually had no intentions of working in the sports industry. And here I was in my first year of university. I went to the University of Pretoria's Open Day and I bumped into the tax football um, table, right? And they asked me, no, are you interested? He plays, but yeah, I'm like, no, I played football in, in high school. Um, probably I need a hobby to keep me busy. So here I was, you know, just joined the team a bit just to um, basically keep fit and also to get a bit of a holistic experience of the university lifestyle you know not just being able to go to the cool party stuff but also be able to study and engage in um, other extracurricular activities and I think that's where I started to realize where the gap was in the market and as time went on as I was studying my communications uh, management degree measuring both marketing and communications um, I got an opportunity to now fiddle you know with at the time when I'm a with in the NFD then I was able to fiddle a bit help out with posters so the tax football system actually helped me do my practical side of things. And then from there, all of a sudden, um, I got an opportunity to work, um, become an intern in my third year for an agency called uh, P Management, which was founded by Karabo Matang. I think, as far as I know, she was the first uh, female in Africa to be a FIFA accredited agent. And I got an opportunity to work with her. And at that point, I was then interacting in focusing on managing the female, uh, the female portfolio, the female sports stars in her agency at the time. And um, from there, when the internship ended, I then moved into Special Olympics South Africa, where I was responsible for the marketing communications. And now, <laughs> I guess I'm at Tech Sport. So I guess that should summarize most of the juicy stuff. <laughs> so it's, it's come full circle. Yes. So you didn't just study at Tux and then you kind of worked in the system. You went out and how important was that to go and work at another company, to go and develop other brands and mm. also take certain people to new heights. <laughs> you worked with Amanda Lamini. Yeah, I did. I did. It was a huge honor. Um, I think that for me, it helped in terms of me getting a clearer understanding of what the industry is like, especially the sports business industry in South Africa and Africa at large. And I got to actually understand, you know, how the NGO side of sports work, and thank, that was thanks to Special Olympics. And I also got to understand how personal bra branding works when it came to interacting with some of the athletes that I had to work with before. And obviously now when I came into the tax system, I had a greater understanding of what the practical implementation of marketing would be in certain aspects. And I think probably that's where it helped a lot. 
So, although you got involved in sports communications almost by fluke, almost by chance, <laughs> uh, yes. did you ever think once you were there that you wanted to make history in the way that uh, you did, being the first black woman and the youngest in your position? Um, not necessarily. For me, it really wasn't about being acknowledged in terms of that. I just found a passion for it and I felt that there was a need to make a difference and an impact, you know, in that industry. And it was my way of actually advocating for women in sport because sometimes we tend to think that we need to make noise on social media, but how can you make noise when we don't have people working behind the scenes uh, trying to work hard towards changing the perceptions of what female role should be in the sports side of life? For me, it was never about, uh, no, I want to make it as a female, I want to prove a point. I obviously did experience sexism here and there in the different organizations that I've worked in. Um, gender inequality, I mean, that's the reality of every woman. But for me, at the end of the day, it was like, there's something that um, I need to change. This feels like it's my calling. I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to give it my all. And all of a sudden, everything else just unfolded on its own. But my focus was always do what you're passionate about, which is marketing, communications, and sport. And that was to just help organizations be able to share their narrative in the best way possible. And I guess everything else came together. So if you want to empower women, you've got to be an empowered woman yourself. You've got to walk yes, the talk. Definitely, definitely. We're going to be continuing the conversation with Mane when we return. Do stay with us. You're watching The Ladies Club. <laughs> Welcome back and thank you for staying with The Ladies Club. It's that part of the show where we get to know our game changer a little bit better. Thanks once again for staying with us, Mane. We've gotten to know you a little bit better, so sports marketing wasn't top of mind, but communications always was. Tell yes. us where you come from and a little bit more about yourself and where this passion for communications comes from. The passion for communication came from seeing the breakdown of communications in the different spheres of my life, you know. Um, growing up, things were not really the easiest at home. And I was able to actually observe the family dynamic and how things were working through communication and how things were not going so well. And I was a very active child, so I enjoyed also um, being involved with community projects. I was that girl who was always at church for some odd reason. <laughs> and I, I got an opportunity to actually see that the biggest reason why we end up in turmoil or end up disagreeing or why there's so much wars is because we fail at the fundamental of communications and I think for me that's where the passion actually started to unfold because it was like okay maybe this is where I can actually make a difference and I was just naturally drawn to it I mean even in my in high school um, for our RCL committee I was actually the public relations officer and I also dealt with that denial phase of but there's a perception that the, the kids who do well, who was always part of the top 10, they don't usually study things like communications. I even had some of my teachers actually call my mother and my sister in to talk about how they don't want me to be studying communications. You know, I should be studying engineering or becoming a doctor and something of that sort. And fortunately for me, my family was very supportive and they said it's still her choice. And ultimately, yes, a part of me is like, maybe I should do the traditional career stuff because it's easy money. But I, I actually went with what my true passion was. And I guess I don't regret it at the moment. Sure. So we've got communications in sport, uh, which are two things that often don't usually uh, sit together, injected with a lot of intelligence in money. <laughs> so what have you found then over the years is the key to communications and that's interpersonal communications as well as when you're communicating different brands and their messages? I mean, the first thing is to be conscious about what people are saying about your brand or what people are saying about your organization. And also internally, it's all about understanding the culture of the organization and where the communication mishaps are happening. And that's where that becomes your fundamental basis point. Because before you can solve something that may be an issue or problem, you have to have a clear understanding about what, act, what it actually is to completion. Then from there, you start looking at, okay, if um, typical example, you find that maybe you're working in a very big organization, 
uh, for example, we are a huge organization, so there will always be a breakdown in communication here or there, but you find ways to streamline the communication so that people can know if this information comes from this person, it's from this department, and it's important in terms of A, B, and C. But it's also all about engagements. If there are issues, if there are problems, it's all about putting people in a forum that's neutral, in a forum where they can be honest about their experiences and also be comfortable enough to suggest how things can get better. And that's the only way you can move forward. What's been the highlight of your career so far? Ooh, phew, there's there've been a couple. Um, I think definitely being a part of the tax board HPC system. And last year we had a very busy year. So we had a lot of finals to deal with. Because I mean, you know, we were doing pretty, pretty good, you know. <laughs> uh, and I remember, <laughs> I remember with the Vast, with Varsity Cup um, last year, we had to host the final. But the, the very uncomfortable thing about that reality was that, first and foremost, it was recess for our university students. So now you have to figure out how on earth you're going to get supporters into a stadium that is about eight, uh, minimum 8,000 maximum capacity. And then you have to figure out these kids are only returning to their residences or even to you know, the relative area, which is helpful at the time, on, the se uh, on th that actual day where the match is supposed to take place. So we had to figure out a way to fill that stadium because obviously you want to create a, a great experience not only for the players but for the fans and also obviously build the brand and bring the brand into a positive light. And um, we sacrificed that Easter weekend with our families last year, which is something that most of us had never, had never ever done, which is very uncomfortable. Most of us were stuck in the office working throughout the Friday till the actual Monday till we had to host the final. And by the grace of God, two hours before the final happened, tickets were sold out. Oh, and wow. then boom, all of a sudden here we're sitting with approximately over 10,000 supporters in the stadium and the students are only starting with class the next day. So it was, there was actually such a great highlight for us. Um, with, um, when I say us, I mean our entire Taxport marketing team because a lot of people didn't think we'd pull it off because we've had a bit of a roller coaster in terms of supporters. I think the entire industry is, is actually uh, experiencing it. But that day it was like, actually... This, this is amazing. We, we did this. We, we, we actually pulled it off. Some would say that it's easy to be in your position and to manage the communications for a place like Tuck Sports because they have got a winning culture and they're always doing very, very well. And it's easy to sell something that's winning. Uh, not all the time, actually. You know, for us, people um, think that it's all about the winning culture, and that's definitely not the truth. Yes, winning is, is important. I mean, it's great for uh, our, our sport brand as well as the University of Pretoria. But the important thing is the people engagement part and the lives that we are changing. For us, the focus is unleashing the next Akani Simbini of tomorrow or discovering um, the future, uh, future athlete from their native communities. So people may think that we're worried about the titles and winning all the time. But for us, it's actually building a structure, making sure the structure is strong and consistent to develop and build build good athletes. I mean, in 2016, we had approximately 49 people who represented um, South Africa at the Olympics who were part of from the tax board system. And we're going to find out a little bit more about what the future holds because I'm very excited just talking to you, spending some time with you, what the future actually holds for you and what your plans are. But Mane's story, while being truly inspiring, let's quickly shift focus to this week's trailblazer, another woman breaking the mold in the world of sport. Dorothy Totsobe, or Ma Totsobe, is well known for her role in the development of women's rugby in the Eastern Cape. Just over 10 years ago, Ma Totsobe gathered a group of enthusiastic women and started women's rugby in her community. The women's game quickly spread to other communities and today women's rugby in the province is absolutely thriving thanks to her efforts. She's also mother to former pro tiers fast bowler Lonwaba Totobe and former Springbok women's rugby captain Norm Sabenzi. She's the first woman ever to serve on the South African Rugby Union President's Council and is currently the only woman serving on the Eastern Province Rugby Executive. Another woman that is a pioneer in her sport and making history. I want to know Who's your role model and who inspires you? Oh my goodness, there are quite a, there's quite a number of women. I think the first one would be my mentor actually, Muritambi Ravele. Um, she's been a very 
excellent mentor and it's very interesting to learn from somebody who started out in the industry when there was basically no platforms for females um, in terms of sport. So I'd say my mentor at the moment is one of my biggest sources of inspiration. And I'd also say my mother because I learned the true definition of woman's strength through her and seeing the sacrifices that she had to make as a mother when she was raising my sister and I while she was sing a single mom before she married my, my dad. And it, it is quite an interesting experience because through those different um, experiences, through poverty, uh, difficult times, it teaches you so much about perseverance and being able to stay determined to actually make your dreams a reality. And I'm able to draw my strength from her. What does the future hold for you? What are your future plans? Ooh. <laughs> Obviously to um, continue working with our cool brand, um, Taxport and HPC. Um, and I think if eventually also branch more into the actual commercialization of sports in Africa. I think that's something I'm actually getting a bit more interested in because from an African context, it looks like there's still a lot of things that we haven't really gotten the gist of in terms of managing our sport organizations as an actual business. So that's something I actually want to look into and actually study and research about. So I think probably in the future, that will be the direction I'll probably take if marketing gets boring to me. But at the moment, it's definitely to carry on building the tax board and HPC brand with our amazing team and um, support staff at tax board. Ofe, we were talking about the sponsorship of women's sport um, and just sports in general in South Africa. And one of the things that hamstrings a lot of that is the fact that administration, perhaps with mm. federations, is not up to scratch. Do you perhaps see yourself going into administration? Only time will tell. It will, it will, it will depend. Uh, it will depend on a lot of factors at that time. At the moment, actually, technically, my role apparently still falls under an administrative role. So... We'll just have to wait and see. There is lots more to this story. That is absolutely, uh, that is one thing for certain. The conversation with our Game Changer continues on the other side of this break. Remember, on Twitter, it's so simple, at sports at SABC. Use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with the show. You're watching The Ladies Club. Please join us on Facebook, Twitter, and you can even email some of your comments. We'd love to hear from you. It's just so easy to get in touch with us. We conclude our conversation with Mane, and we want to find out a little bit more who this lady is at home. What do you do for fun? Oh, goodness. Do you really want to know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yes, <laughs> now I definitely do. Um, usually hang out with friends, travel, go to the spa, but we like, because we're young, I mean, I'm still 26, so we'll <laughs> party, <laughs> party up a storm, recover for a day. <laughs> then um, um, that's usually most of the stuff that I usually do. And I like reading. I enjoy reading. I enjoy curling up with a little book or my favorite mag and then just go on a series, series binge when I'm tired. So when I feel like taking a proper break, I just decide, okay, oh, this is series. And then I stay in bed all day and just watch series. Okay, so uh, what is on your bucket list next to go to travel to? Like, where is your next travel I destination? I am going to Thailand next month. Oh, wow, lovely. <laughs> With one of my friends, so that's um, definitely in the plans. Maybe in, uh, towards the end of the year, I'll probably go to, if things go according to plan, to Morocco with Bay. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, so we do know that there's now a, a boyfriend in the mix and she does <laughs> like to enjoy herself. So she's not all work and books and uh, intelligence. But how do you manage all of this stuff to be such a well-rounded well person? I mean, it's not easy. It takes a lot of effort. Um, I'm even at a point right now in my life where I schedule everything. <laughs> as much as some people think it's really weird, if I know that I have to be with my family this weekend, I already schedule it off. So I block times out for personal stuff and I just 
try to stick to the similar schedule every day. Of course, because I work in sports, it's quite dynamic, but I try to get the basics out of the way, like what time am I going to run? I know if I run at half past five, it's going to be half past five for the whole four days of the week. If I know that I need to cook at, at six o'clock, I try to make sure that I'm cooking dinner at six o'clock. So it's just being very, very uh, strict on your schedule. I'm not saying that it works all the time. Some days, obviously, things may change here and there, but it's just having that overall uh, plan to say, okay, this is what I'm sticking to. Then squeezing a digital course here and there when there's extra time. <laughs> I, I, I just I just look at you in wonder because sports <laughs> is dynamic and yes. you have to be incredibly flexible and you yes. have to be able to adapt. Yes. So I mean how do you how do you do that? I mean, well, firstly, if it's not my actual strength, I delegate. So fortunately for um Fortunately for me in our department, we've got a wide array of experience and people have strengths. So we have a good graphic designer. So if something, if it's something graphic related, you just give her the role and uh, to do her job, you know. And if it's something in terms of journalism or finding stories, you give it to the person who's responsible for that. So it's always about just making sure that you're very conscious of what your strength is, and then whatever you're not strong uh, with, you're able to ask someone else to say, okay, look, this is not my strength, or I don't have capacity to do this. Can you just kind assist and take care of this and most of the time people are always willing to help and that's fortunate for us in our environment where we know that we can always help each other out and work together to make sure that things are always looking good for the brand if there was one person that you could meet and you could <sighs> spend dinner with and they can be passed or they can still be alive uh, who to be and what would you ask them I'd like to have tea with Mary Magdalene and I know it's very odd and okay. unexpected because I just have like interesting questions because um, I want to find out what her experience was as a woman in that time and some of the actual things that really happened. So you're just like, but did this really happen? Can you like tell us the truth, you know? Um, so that's what I'd actually find, uh, like to find out because I'm actually intrigued by religion and what's actually inside some of the manuscripts and the Bibles, what has been omitted and what actually is, exists there and some of the other theories. So I'd actually be interested in just chilling with her and say, actually, just tell us how Papa <laughs> Jay was back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Jay! <laughs> It would be interesting to actually hear it from a female perspective because we don't have a lot of uh, biblical books that are written by females. So that's why I think I'd actually like to sit with her and maybe she can actually paint the story in a, in a different light. So tell us what your favorite Bible verse is then. Ah, it's ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. I think that's one of my favorite verses. What it doesn't say, though, is when you go through those doors, <laughs> sometimes you find people with their own perceptions about oh, yes. race, age, and mm. gender. How mm. do you deal with those? I mean, at the end of the day, and that is something that I think is important for a lot of women in sports to make peace with, you are in the reality. People will either not like you because of the color of your skin, They'll either not like you because of your age and they'll think that you're too young to have great ideas or to even have potential or, or to even be in the position that you're in. And lastly, some will have a problem that you're actually a woman. You just have to make peace of the fact that that's who you are and that's okay. And what anyone else thinks about it, it's their problem. It has nothing to do with you. You need to learn to separate the two. And I think that's where people get it wrong because people allow people's perceptions of them to dictate who they are supposed to be or who they are to become. Whereas you make the ultimate decision. And at the end of the day, the reality is it will never change. Not everybody will be willing to be open-minded. Not everybody will be accommodating. And that's a reality you need to accept. What you need to focus on is the delivery of your work. You need to make sure that your work is excellent, it's consistent, and is a true reflection of who you are. Everything else will fall away eventually. Young, dynamic, and a game changer. Mane Bokanya, thank you so much for coming on to the Ladies Club and sharing your thoughts with us. How can people get hold of you on social media? Oh, goodness, they can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and it's just Mane Bokanya. Lovely, and in a month's time, you'll be able to see lots of beautiful pictures from <laughs> Phuket and PP Island and Thailand. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great having you inside the Ladies Club. And before we go, uh, TLC wants to congratulate Kasa Semenya, who recently broke the 35-year-old South African 1,000-meter record of Ilzo Wixel.
All right. Our women are really doing amazing things. And let's do this again. Let's speak about women's sport on next week's program. And until we do meet again, remember that greatness is never given. It's always earned. Goodbye.